Glamis is like one of those places where bring plenty of fuel, don't ride alone, because you will get lost. Glamis is the sandbox. We're trying to build the biggest, nastiest, fastest X3 that we can drag out here. I did everything I would give somebody the advice not to do right off the bat. It's kind of like herding cats. They like to party and go fast, so that's, that's a good place to do it. Anybody with a UTV and anybody that goes and rides knows about Glamis. Oh man, Glamis is a crazy place that you always speculate about. I would say there is a lot of mystique to Glamis. You know, you always hear stories about how you can ride down to Mexico and all the cool things that are out there. Everybody tells you that the sand shifts a crazy amount every single year from the winds blowing it. But you look at the people who live out there, for the most part are gearheads. I mean, you're going out there to push the limits of your vehicle. Well, one thing, everybody wants to race. I think probably the most important thing to have out there in Glamis is power. The whole thing is about horsepower wars out there in the West Coast. Glamis would be the epitome of anybody's adult sandbox. When we sat down and uh, talked about this bill, we knew we had to have something really cool looking, really clean, that West Coast style. The Can-Am X3 is really at home in the dunes, and that's where that thing shines. We took a Maverick X3 XRS, already has a 72 inch suspension on it, so it's already got the long travel. It fits in with Glamis. But my thing is, I gotta take it over the top. Uh, the main thing was, you know, kind of build something a little wild. I want this thing to make crazy power and be impressive when people see this thing going down Sand Highway. Uh, man, this one's getting the works. We got the Evo Stage 6 big turbo kit going on this thing today. We'll be pushing big power out of this motor. A little over almost 30 pounds of boost in this baby. Uh, with reflash, bigger injectors, and all the power adders to get that thing really turning the tires. It's going to be fast. In fact, it's probably going to be nasty. For all the S3 parts, we did full suspension. A-arms, radius rods, shock tire brace, gussy kit, everything that you can walk through our store and grab off the shelf, we threw on this car. More power, more look, we wanted to, to send it all the way. So he, he was making crazy horsepower with that thing. Yeah, I do like doing a wild build. I like going really over the top, but that's just not the style we were going for. We wanted this thing to be like a sports car, like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, like low and sweet looking and fast. Word on the street is, shipping company finally showed up with the wheels we've been waiting on. KMC hooked us up, so we're gonna check them out, see what they look like. Woo! That's sweet. So we got KMC to send us a set of 10 inch wide wheels on the back, five inch wide wheels on the front. Oh yeah. And it is gold, like super gold. Oh man, that's baller. When it comes to design and style of the machines, I'm resident expert. Nah, player. Y'all been listening to me a long time ago. Y'all already had this on there. Red and gold was actually my idea. You know, I like to give credit where credit's due. Red and gold, Logan's idea. That's gonna pop. That's gonna pop pretty good. The truth be told, I'm the one that came up with it several months before. I'd mentioned wanting to do it to one of my pit bikes. Ooh, that's it. Oh, that's deep. That's the deep one. That's that deep dish. Yeah, everybody takes credit for my ideas. This one was mine. That's the truth. I didn't want to put these on because I don't want to scratch them. We were going big with the wheels and tires, which nobody's ever tried, and huge 35-inch paddles. I've literally never seen a UTV running buggy paddles. Drop it. If nobody's doing it, that's what we're going to try to do. It looks crazy like that. I'm getting sweaty, y'all. I thought it was crazy. But if it works, it could probably look pretty cool. It's a good power to weight ratio, but we didn't know what to expect. Man, we didn't know if it was going to pull these big tires or what, but it sure did look sweet. This, this was my first time to Glamis ever. Uh, a little nervous. With our crew, it's always wild. 
Always been kind of a bucket list place to go ride. Biggest sand dunes, the wildest sand dunes. When when riding season starts, that's where people go out west. What's happening? What's up, pals? What are you guys doing? Headed to Horsepower Wars? We are. That weekend of Halloween, it's crazy. I mean, there's campers for miles. So this trip was going to be a little different. We decided we were going to take everybody on what you would consider a scavenger hunt. So the first thing we do, we hit the rugged team. Steve, tell me real quick. So a big part of why we're coming out here, try to hit spots and stuff that people don't know about. So we've been finding stuff out here that not many people would know about. So there's a rumor floating around for Glamis that, that there's a plane that's gone down. Apparently there was a plane crash out here at some point. There is. There's like a part of a fuselage or something in the sand okay. or something. Nobody really knows when it happened. The coordinates are not exactly right. That's our mission. My mission this weekend is to find the airplane. Right, buddy. But pretty well everybody knows there's a plane somewhere in Glamis and we're gonna find it. I have no idea what we're doing today. They like said they're taking us to the fun stuff. We ain't gonna be dilly-dallying around today. We're getting work done. You see how many Uncrustables we brought? Huh? Well, I'm gonna make sure we get as much water as we can. Ready to uh, actually get to see the dunes today and rip around. Obviously, we want to get to rip the dunes quite a bit, but there's some hidden gems that are online that we've been trying to research and find. There's a couple of flagpoles and like a, a fireman's memorial, a swing set that's out here. And then the last thing, apparently, there's a plane crash somewhere out here. So all we have right now is what we research is literal GPS coordinates. So we're going to be holding the phone, stopping every few dunes and looking. We get out there and, man, you're in these big sweeping dunes, so you just want to lay the car on the floor and go as fast as you can, so I was hooked. There's a whole lot of weight on your shoulders being the <laughs> being the ring leader in Glamis, man. The dunes are a little tough to navigate out there. Yeah, you're carving dunes, and you may be five miles either way to anything, and then you break over this dune and boop, down in this bottom's a flat. All right, y'all, I think it's about time for lunch and a nap. That was a good ride for the day. Scared ourselves a couple times, I'm ready to lay down. <laughs> Uncrustable? We were gonna hit as many landmarks as we could in the day. The first place we hit, the Firefighters Monument. We usually have to do some searching, but I'll be honest, Mr. Mal was navigating this time. He's the one that pointed us in the right direction. Somehow they poured concrete and carried all the supplies out there, hundreds of pounds of supplies. Who on earth built this thing out in the middle of nowhere? How did they get that thing out of here? I've seen, a, I've seen a movie about this. They were fighting a wildfire to stop it from hitting a small town. But it was a neat place. The, the people from that area, uh, from where the wildfires happened, actually came out there and built that monument. But they, they ended up stopping it. They cut it off and just ended up getting trapped. That's crazy. And we were surprised to see that quite a bit of people knew about this. And so with just a little research, we found this, this fireman's memorial, and it was really cool. I think there's a lot of different stuff. You know, the, the popular stuff is always what you see. And our group always kind of wants to get off the beaten path and, and do the different stuff and find the different spots to go ride. Like, we're, we're cruising the dunes. And you gotta understand, like, the sun reflecting off the dunes the entire time you're riding. So it's bright out there. We stopped just by random, I think, just to kind of, like, get our bearings. Come with me. The sand is a majestic hey. thing. You never know what it's gonna uncover. And Dustin finds the Holy Grail of mechanic shops. Thousands of years ago, there were people here in this very spot working on things. And we found the 10 millimeter. I've lost a thousand 10 millimeters in my life. No toolbox I own has a 10 millimeter in it. I don't really know what to do at this point. They're very difficult to find. They're almost an extinct species. You need to get a little bit of material underneath it, a little bit of earth and the soil below it, and sift through it as if you're sifting for gold. We've pretty much solved a mystery. This is like finding out there's a Bigfoot. I know where all the 10 millimeters are. The sand pirates have taken them all to Glamis and buried them. <laughs> Finally found it. We've searched our lives through, and of all places, Glamis sand dunes. That's when I knew it was gonna be a good trip. Yeah, the dunes walk, they move. I don't know how this plane ended up out there. It got covered up with sand, and then the wind blew the sand off of it again, and you could go out to it. I had seen pictures of a plane crash out there. I believe that there was a plane out there at one time. But what's the story behind it? And I don't think anybody really knows. I'm gonna wildly speculate it was the Wright Brothers plane. Probably a Tom Cruise that was flying drugs back and forth. You know what I'm talking about? You know what, I'm gonna retract that. I'm gonna speculate that it was Amelia Earhart. When he landed in Louisiana Bayou's, who's to say he didn't land in Glamis? So, made it to the swing set. Naturally, there's some kids. Dustin and Quentin want to go over there and kick them off the swing. Before I saw the swing set, I had already seen a picture of it on Facebook. So, I knew this is a well-built swing set. 
That makes no sense. We go out west every single month and we got plenty of friends that ride in Glamis and nobody told us about the swing set. Everybody gets on the swing and starts swinging high and then like it's like, all right, it's cool, you swung high. Everybody knows how you exit a swing. Look at that distance. Are we doing a long jump? Yeah. Are we doing a long jump? Y'all wanna have a long jump competition? Yeah, we were thinking if we come over here, show them what we've got on these swings, then swing set's ours. Let it, you go first. We have a long jump competition. And so uh, me and Quentin teamed up against this little kid. <laughs> Get all you can. I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to catch you on the forward stroke. Um, it turned into a full-blown swing-off long jump competition. Woo! Oh! Hold your spot. This kid looked like a flying squirrel when he left the swing. Oh, he got you. I don't understand how a little boy that small can fly so far, but he had it timed perfect. Look, I put the dogs on me. Freaking stomped him out by like four foot. Bobby, here I come. Oh, you're not even close, bro. Logan, you're so weak. But I ain't no guy that's gonna let no little boy beat me. He legitimately flew farther than I could. I'm hurt. Yeah, he came in. He said he's been a three-year professional swinger. He whooped us. Just trying to punk little kids in the middle of the desert. You know what we do? Having fun. We look like idiots in front of a thousand people. <laughs> Gator don't play that anyways. Everybody knows that. Yeah, it was pretty embarrassing for us. Like, we got out of there pretty quick after that. Mama say, mama say, it's the All right, so yesterday I feel like it was a success. But uh, I feel like everybody everybody knows now we got a special guest. I ain't never been here before, so number one riding destination bucket list for me, so for a while. Man, I can't wait to get out there and freaking rip. I hope the car, I just put the car together, so hopefully I didn't miss anything. But for now, we got to uh, fill up everything. Well, yeah, let's, let's, let me back up for a second. Let's be real. We're going to give Mr. Mouse some Dawn dish soap and wash rag so he can wash out the ice chest. Oh. <laughs> I put them crustables in there. He opened it up, and it looked like bread pudding. Oh. Yeah, the crustables was for sure Quentin's deal. He's the one that had got them. He, he bought them. Nope, there's nobody that doesn't like them. They got great strawberry. Plain peanut butter and honey, I think now. Maybe we need to put Uncrustables in the ice chest with water. Nothing can go wrong with that. It's a little old thing that got Mr. Mao so upset. He wasn't really impressed, to be honest with you. I've seen Mr. Mao mad several times in his life. He was so freaking mad about those mashed up Uncrustables. It's all milky and puddingy. So I, I banned any Crustables from being in my cooler from now on. Ugh. I'm gonna probably blame it on Logan. He won't really catch the blame for much. And so I'm pretty sure it was Logan that blowed that uh, uncrustable apart in Mr. Mouse cooler. So the second day, we had a, a really cool trip planned. The place that we really wanted to get to and show everybody was China Wall, because it's so impressive, it's so big, it's so steep. I was beyond excited, drove through the night to get there. I was ready to do some riding. You no, know, China Wall secluded. You, you have to work to get there. The face of it is, oh man, the face of it's half a mile. I had never seen it, never seen videos of it or anything like that, so I didn't know what to expect. I just knew that it was this practically vertical wall of one of the biggest dunes in Glamis. It's deceiving how far it goes, but it's one of those things, once you commit to climb China Wall, you can't back down. It's it's hard to describe, even though you, you're, you're banked. Like, when you go to turn the car, man, the car hooks so hard. What's crazy is how impressive these cars are, man, to go climb that. That's crazy. Anytime you walk across the face of it, you're doing something. Yeah, that ain't no lie. To be able to power across it. There's that one little hill that unloads the car though and gets a little funny right here. Glamis is hard not to smile out there because you're ripping the dunes, man. You're carving bowl to bowl. You get a good rhythm going. It's a cool, fun place to ride that, that you shouldn't be scared of. Everything was like cooler or over the top than it was described that we were going to. So like that's gonna be a trip every year that we take for sure. Um, I could have rode there another two or three days easily. Yeah, I can tell there was a lot of doubt in people's minds because they didn't know we had all the evolution stuff on this car. But I was shocked how strong that car was and how fast it was with those monster tires. When I saw the tires, I thought it was a horrible idea. I didn't think we had enough horsepower to pull them, but, but he did. Dude, the car ripped. I mean, it, it, it out accelerated out of the hole in mid-range every car out there. There was no comparison. Yeah, man, we pretty well hit all the spots that we'd gone out there. Hit the, the things that we had read about online. What what plane crash is the question? <laughs> yeah, in general, I'm starting to doubt if there ever was a plane crash, to be honest with you. I don't know if those pictures were even from Glamis, looking back now. I was dead set we were going to find that plane that people had speculated about, but now I'm starting to doubt that there ever was a plane crash. On the next episode of Visions of Victory. Yeah. 
country in Mexico. We got a border to cross. I'm really gonna show y'all how to get these things crossed up. Everybody's talking about, I'm glad we got Manny here. I'm glad we got Angel. They can interpret for us. Yeah, cruising along and the tire comes rolling past me. We don't have a tool bag with us. I got Mexican street swag and I do speak Spanish. Okay, I have returned for my travel flag. We found weather. So, what do we got? A possible new desert creature. Is there a bum and a dog coming up behind me? Because <laughs> I can hear one bark. We're waiting on Freaking Quentin. Always waiting on Quentin. We've now waited on Quentin for this trip. A total of seven hours and 47 minutes. And he's the last one getting gas. He was the last one to get up. Was that a gunshot? Uh-oh. I'm in there. He's the woman of the group. Always waiting on him. That's probably our cue to get out of here. Somebody got shot or stabbed right here around us. <laughs> it's time for us to go.